Hey everybody, and welcome to the third video where we're going to continue talking more in depth about the options of Marvel's Designer. Now, if you haven't watched the first two videos, go ahead and check those out. And basically, this is where we stopped off in the second video. So this is where we're going to continue uh, from. Now, in our previous video, where we stopped was basically where we created uh, this type of a model. So now we're going to progress to uh, something a bit more different, namely something similar to this. And by doing this, I will be able to show you more uh, interesting options that MD has. So to do this, what I'm going to do is, uh, first of all, just so I don't have to start from the beginning, I'm just going to go ahead and copy the base here. Control C, Control V, just so I can have another uh, option to work with or another version of this thing to work on. It will make us another option right here. There we go. So another version, zoom into it, and there we go. All right. So I have a base on which I can start to build on. But in this case, if I check out my reference image, I'm going to notice that this thing has way mo more cut-ins, which are very different from what we had in here. So if we take the same approach, it is viable, but it's going to take us a lot more time to finish this. So in uh, order to get this thing to be uh, faster, and basically make it easier for us. What we can do is do a bit of a simple math and take a different approach. Just so you can see it better, what I'm gonna do is again, I'm gonna raise this uh, thing a bit to the um, top here. I'm gonna select my inner part in here and I'm gonna delete it. There we go. Now, I like the fact that it had 50 centimeters of height. I like the height, but we need to uh, rethink how we are going to uh, divide this in order to have all of those small uh, cuts or all of those small sides. Now, in this case, I'm not really sure how many sides there are, but if I were to venture, I guess I would say somewhere about 20 to 24. So let's go with 20, just so it's easier. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically take the length of this entire uh, side, which is 39.24 multiplied by four, where it comes out to 156.96. There we go. So, so something like this. So if I want to go ahead and make 20 copies of this, I just need to go ahead, divide this thing to 20 and I get this number right here. So, Knowing this number, what I'm going to do is go in here, create a height of 50, which is what I want. And the width, I'm going to take in uh, or plug in that number that we just got. So 7.848 or 7.84 like this should work. So click OK. Awesome. So we have this uh, one piece in here. I'm going to move it to somewhere along there. There we go. Now, what I want to do is I want to make 19 more copies of this. The thing here is that there are multiple ways we can make the copies. Uh, I can go in and uh, control C, control V this thing like this, and then uh, individually go in and uh, just sew these two together but this is going to be a very tedious way of doing it this way. Instead, I'm going to show you another approach to how to deal with something like this. So we have this and I need to have another 19 uh, different or different copies of this. So what I'm going to do is with my edit pattern, I'm going to right click here and just go offset pattern outline. So, now, this is a new um, window we haven't talked about. So what this pattern outline will do, it will basically, like it says, it will offset it. So in this case, I want to offset it by this much. So 7.84, so 7.84. And I can choose how many offsets I want. Since I need 19, I'm just going to type in 19. I'm also going to click on create internal line. Now, this is a very important thing to do. click 
if we want to have all of these as internal lines or cut lines like in here. Now, if we don't do that, what uh, will happen is again, all of these lines that you see in here will be visible, but they will be basically baselines. They will not be uh, actual internal lines. In this case, we want to have internal lines. I'm gonna click on unifying corner, although it doesn't really make sense here. There's nothing uh, to do. So I'm just gonna click on okay and accept the change. So this is what we just got. And this is great. This is what I want. So now to make it uh, easier, I'm gonna click on again on the free sewing. Click here, go across and accept. Click here, go across and accept. Click here, go across and accept here. All right. So it, once we do this in a manner like this, there is a pretty good chance that now when I start to simulate this thing, I might run into a problem and you'll see in a second. So I'm going to unfreeze this. I do have uh, some pressure on this. So I need to ramp up this thing to 10. Again, I'm gonna put the same uh, pressure here as 10. And I'm gonna run the simulation just so we can see the problem. All right. I raise it up a bit and we can see that this thing is trying to turn itself uh, over on itself and the reason for this is that the way that the the bottom and the top were set up at the beginning of the sewing was kind of with a twisted uh, type of uh, seg because of the segment sewing was twisted we got that thing but in this case we can see that this actually worked out okay but now I just need to go in and segment sew the sides and run the simulation one more time there we go all right and this ended up looking okay. But now we saw that we had a bit of a problem here because when it started uh, going haywire, when uh, we basically started the simulation, we don't wanna have that happen if we're working on a more complex uh, object. In this case, it wasn't that big of a problem. So how do we deal with that? Well, in order to deal with that, what you would have to do is uh, you would have to go ahead and try to minimize the path that the cloth or the fabric will have to travel. So in order to show you how that thing is done, I'm going to go ahead and right click here and reset the 3D arrangement. This is going to put, put it in the original uh, state that it was. So I'm going to put it back or pull it back a bit. So now, uh, as you can see, where it's, when it starts to go ahead and try to bend around this these sides have to go and travel a bigger distance than these ones so the way that we can do this is a couple of uh, different ways the first one would be to cut up this uh, piece into smaller pieces and position them around uh, the model but i'm actually going to use this to show you another method and this is by using a tool that mb has to offer that tool is called the fold arrangement. So once you click on the fold arrangement, what was going to happen here is that now you can select each of these internal lines. And you can you see the uh, this red and green line. So if you click on this green, you can actually rotate this. And now take into account the fact that when you're doing this, you're not just uh, moving this or rotating it, but at the same time, you're changing the fold angle. And that can be seen on this side right here where it says 117 for this. So if I go ahead, click here, 
you can see it's 180 but as soon as i start rotating it that will change to 895 and so on so these folding arrangements can be very very helpful when you uh, when you don't uh, want to have your uh, model or your fabric travel a larger um, route in order to get to the simulation so if we do it like this now and i just uh, hit resimulate and it's gonna do this uh thing but let's just go back let's hit all right freeze this for now the reason why it's doing this is i actually uh, reset the state there we go so this is why it's doing it like that but there we go so no more of that problem everything goes where it's supposed to go i can go ahead and freeze this and there we go it just got back into position so to get the final look for this i'm going to do the same thing we did uh previously actually going to select everything here right click and freeze it now i just need the top and this side so we're going to do the same thing again so right click go layer clone over put it on top and again very important thing whenever you do the layer clone over and you have this thing selected you're going to see that here we have the cyan uh, color which means that the original one is selected as well so right click and oh, right click and just go remove the linked editing there we go so by just doing this i can go ahead now unfreeze and let's put it on a different fabric for the top so let's just put in a fabric or two let's give it a bit more of a uh, shrinkage weft or warp let's go with 110 with 110 this is going to give it a bit more than i was expecting but and let's change the preset to something else like let's try linen and see how that thing looks it's going to drape all right and now we can slowly start to reduce the warp 105 all right let's try 105 here as well back to 100 and there we go i do have that roundness I do have some of the shrinkage around the seams and if i want to have more geometry for this or more details i just need to increase the particle distance so let's go with 10 here hit the run for the simulation awesome all right let's give it 10 here as well For this one, let's just 105 and run the simulation. There we go. Much better, although this is leather, so should probably reduce it. Also, uh, for the when it, when you're using leather or you're, when you're trying to simulate leather leather doesn't really wrinkle that much so if you want to get that look you go over here and from the preset choose some of the leathers there are some that are rather rugged as the leather cowhide or the lambskin so if you go cowhide it's going to reduce uh, the amount of wrinkles that we see in the simulation now Another thing that I want to add while we are still working on this thing is that MD also uh, gives you the ability to add stitching on your model. 
But we need to understand one thing. If we're gonna use Marvelous Designer to add stitching, when you export, it will export the stitching as actual geometry. So keep that in mind because it's going to make your models quite a bit uh, heavier than if you add your stitching in the texturing phase or you add it in a uh, external um, software like 3ds max the way that the stitching works is very simple here though all you have to do is you go over here where it says segment top stitch so once you click on it it will give you all of the segments that are available on your model that you've uh, made here so what I can do is just select all the segments where I would like to have a stitching. And as I'm moving around, you can see that all of those that I click become this pink color. And this basically means that if they have that pink color, I've, all, uh, I've already added a stitching to it. And as soon as I'm finished with this, I'll go to the end. You'll see the difference it makes on your model and how to control that. So two more, one, and the last one we don't have to do because that thing is uh, basically um, sewn to the other one. So now if I zoom in here, what you're gonna notice is that on the corners here, I do have a stitch. Just to, so it's easier to see, what I'm going to do is change the fabric color to something a bit different. Click OK. And apparently I haven't added that fabric over here. But yeah, we go. There, there we go. So right here you can see that we have this stitch added to our model. Now the thing here with the stitching is uh, simple. It will show up on your model. But once you start simulating, that thing will be gone. So there we go. So it's no longer there when it's simulating. As soon as you stop the simulation, that will be visible. So when you export this, these stitchings will come with uh, the model. Now, how can you control the stitching? Well, over here in these uh, menus in here, you have this top stitch. And this is the default top uh, stitch. In here you have some options that you can choose, which will define what sort of a stitch you have on your model, as well as the length of the stitches and the distance between the stitches. Now, by default, this thing here is set up as the type fabric mat, but what you can do is, actually not that, that's the material. This is the shape. You have a pick stitch, but you can choose any of these and all of these are different types of stitching and it doesn't really take much time to go over them and see how they look because as soon as you uh, just change it, it it should automatically update in the viewport there we go for some of these though uh like i said this is geometry so they're going to be very very dense as you can see this one is a zigzag and here you can control the length, the width, and the spacing of it. So if I go ahead and increase the length to from 0 0.02 and go to something like 0 0.05, this should propagate immediately on our model. And depending on how many places you have with this sort of a stitch, it could take a few uh, seconds. Like, I'm not trying to... Um, go ahead and pause this thing and edit it. I just want to show you in real time how long this thing takes. But sometimes, especially if you have a model that has a lot of places, this thing can take a bit of time. So be very wary when you're using uh, stitches that come with uh, MD. But, but there you go. You can see it really does look very, very nice. Now, since this is a 3D model or geometry for the stitching, MD will allow you to basically use your own stitch for this. So you can uh, use a custom OBJ if you have one. As long as that thing is styleable, it will work just great. So also let's uh, 
see some of the other ones. Well, single ones are the most uh, commonly used, I think. And the great thing about these is that you can control, like I said, the length, you can control the spacing between them, and you can even control the thickness of the tread. So if I go ahead and uh, put this thing to space centimeters like 0.2, you, you're gonna see that in between all of these, there's gonna be like 0.2. Now, a word of advice, something I've noticed is that, I'm not sure if this is just a uh, small glitch, but sometimes when you try to change the thread thickness here from 0.2, like if I go and try to go put it to 0.1, it will read it as one. And that's a problem because it's going to make, yeah, there we go. So it's reading it as one. For some reason, I think this is a bug that they need to fix, but it doesn't read the zero point something. So if you try to put 0.5, it's going to go to five centimeters. So be very wary if you're going to use this. Control Z once. And there you go. So that's a easy way to add in uh, some stitching on your model and make it uh, look really nice. And with that, we basically have our uh, second or third video finished. I hope you guys had fun and you managed to pick up on some new skills from this video. If you would like to support me, you can click the join button and the direct links will be in the description below. The most helpful thing you can do is just click the like and subscribe buttons if you're not a uh, sus subscriber yet and comment below in the video. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next video where we will continue talking a bit more about Marvel's designer. So, bye-bye.